Hi there, I'm Mike. What up? You today is Amazon exclusives Chewbacca and C3PO. This is going to be a really weird review because this is essentially two different figures, but also one is kind of an accessory for the other figure, but he's a figure in his own right, and he's also a figure. I've never actually reviewed on my channel before. I've never done a C-3PO review. So I think I'm just gonna do this as best I can, basically reviewing two different figures, but also in the sense that they're meant to kind of just be one display piece. It's gonna be weird. Just buckle up and we'll see how long this takes because I genuinely have no idea. Why don't you take a look at a picture of the figures while I read the bio on the back of the box here. Encountering a stormtrooper in Cloud City, C-3PO was blasted at point-blank range and his limbs were scattered. Chewbacca gathered the parts of the protocol droid and partially reassembled him. Good half job, Chewbacca. Here we have him right out of the package. Actually, that's not true at all. This is not how he is out of the package, but we'll get to that. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I do want to start off with the looks. So here we have two different figures. We've got Chewbacca and we have C-3PO. Do they look like they should? Do they look like they did in the movie? And to make sure, when I got this figure, as I was fiddling with it, I put on Empire Strikes Back. Specifically, I started when they got to Bespin and just kind of watched to the end of the movie because I love that movie so much. I just couldn't stop. Once they, they escaped, I'm like, well, the movie's almost over. I might as well finish it now. I had to fight the urge to go back and watch it from the beginning. It's my favorite Star Wars movie. Anyways, <laughs> I'm getting way off track here. Does this look like it should? And the answer is actually surprisingly yes because my first instinct was that it doesn't, specifically, Chewbacca. When you look at Chewbacca, his hair is kind of parted in the middle. Now that's a classic Return of the Jedi look for Chewbacca. And my first instinct was, this is wrong! And I was gonna watch it frame by frame to prove how wrong it was. I, I can't because it's actually not wrong. When Chewbacca was putting C-3PO back together and as they were running through Bespin, escaping, Chewbacca's nice slicked back hair, it kind of comes forward and parts a little bit. So this is actually accurate to the movie, even though I didn't think it would be. Now that aside, because that, that was the first thing I noticed and the first thing I want to talk about. This is the fifth Chewbacca in the Black Series line, if you count the one that came with the Resistance figures from the Galaxy's Edge Resistance area. I'm counting it as a different release because I feel like the paint job alone is worth counting it as a new figure, but some people might disagree with that, and that's fine. You do you, I do me. But there are two different basic molds here. The original Phase 2 Chewbacca and the Force Awakens and the Resistance Chewbacca all share the same body mold with slightly different heads, whereas this one right here actually shares a body mold with the Solo Chewbacca, which in my opinion is the better of the two different molds, and I'm glad they did that. It's just a scotch shorter, which I feel like is a little bit more accurate to the height of Chewbacca relative to the other sizes of the figures, but I also just feel like it is a slightly better mold of the character with a little bit better articulation. Ultimately, Chewbacca looks like he should. He's accurate to the movie. My only downside to this is actually just a problem with Chewbacca himself. I'm just not a fan of the way that Hasbro has decided to sculpt Chewbacca. I can look at him and see that he's Chewbacca. No one can dispute the fact that this is Chewbacca, but it definitely is a, it's a weird look, but at the same time, I don't know what else they could have done, but something about it just kind of leaves me just a little unsatisfied with how it looks. They did use the face printing technology on this, and of all the Chewbaccas, this one has the best face. His expression is neutral, his eyes look very sharp and realistic, but the nose on this looks a lot better compared to the other Chewbacca's. And let's move on to C-3PO, because I just don't have all day. Now this again is the fifth C-3PO in the line. It is using the newer version of C-3PO, the one that they kind of changed over with the droid three pack from Galaxy's Edge. So the first two 3PO's came out and they were very limited in articulation. They were very disappointing figures in general. But you know, does C-3PO look like C-3PO? And the answer here is, yeah, but my biggest problem with Hasbro C-3PO, and this is true for all of them, is that C-3PO is known for his luster and his shine. And that's something that all of these C-3PO's are lacking. Yes, he's gold, but it's like a dull matte gold. And C-3PO sparkles. 
he shines. Yes, this looks like C-3PO, physically, but I'm not a fan of how they chose to portray him with how he looks. For the looks category, I'm grading both figures, so it's technically out of two. I'm gonna give it a 1.25 out of two points. Now moving on to accessories. Oh boy. Each of these figures kind of have their own accessories and then there's one accessory that kind of is split between the two of them. So it took me a while to kind of figure out how to do this, but I think I settled on something that works pretty well. Let's start with Chewbacca again. He comes with his standard Chewbacca bandolier, and I'm counting it as an accessory because it can come off. And I say that because it only wants to come off. This has actually been a problem with every Chewbacca, except for the Solo one, because of the way the Solo bandolier kind of worked. This bandolier is just sitting on his shoulder, and it tends to slide down like a bra strap. I know I said that in my Solo review, but... It's just, it's the most apt description for what it is. It constantly wants to just slide down his shoulder. It's very frustrating, but the bandolier itself is very, very good. I think this is actually a unique mold of the bandolier, and if it's not, it's a unique color for the bandolier. It's a little bit different from the phase two Chewbacca that we got, and it's definitely different from the uh, sequel trilogy Chewbacca bandolier, and of course the solo bandolier. The paint on it is okay. The buckles on the bottom down here are a little sloppy. They're actually better on the phase two Chewbacca. But I don't want to go on and on about his bandolier, but it's an important thing because he doesn't have a lot. He's not really wearing clothes. He's just wearing a strap down the middle of his torso. But he does come with a gun. Now this gun is the E-11 Imperial Blaster. It's the same one the Stormtroopers use. And that's accurate to what he had in the movie. Because by this time in the movie, his bowcaster had been confiscated because they got captured by Darth Vader when he invited them to dinner and Han Solo shot him like a jerk. The blaster itself is, I mean, it's pretty good. It's molded into black plastic. I mean, we've got a million of these in those Black Series lines so far. It does have a little bit of paint apps where paint apps are needed. And for the most part, it kind of fits in his hands. It's a little loose. His hands are big, the gun is small, but that's kind of how Chewbacca is, so I kind of get it. I kind of do wish that he'd come with his bowcaster. I know he didn't use it in this, but he did use it in Empire Strikes Back. So it would have been nice to have, you know, just a bowcaster in there. There's no reason not to. It's not like it wasn't a deluxe figure and they already had a bunch of parts in there. They have bowcaster molds. They could just literally mold it and toss it in and call it a day. But they didn't. They only gave us the one blaster. But I really would have wished we'd also gotten the bowcaster because I think it would have helped a lot of people if this was their first or only Chewbacca. I also, just for fun, would have loved some blaster effects. I'm going to keep saying this until Hasbro starts doing it because they've done it a couple times. We've gotten some blast effects in the line before with the Stormtrooper, specifically with this gun. It could have just come off the edge. It would have looked cool, and I really want Hasbro to start doing that. So I'm gonna keep saying it until they listen. And that's it pretty much for Chewbacca's accessories. He doesn't come with a lot, just the gun and the bandolier, and that's pretty much it. C-3PO actually comes with the most accessories until this year that C-3PO's ever come with. Typically, C-3PO comes with no accessories. This year, we had the Babu Frick Target exclusive C-3PO, which came with a bunch of stuff. And and then we have this one, which also comes with a bunch of stuff. So let's take a look at the accessories for C-3PO. First, we have his arms. The arms are technically accessories because what comes on him are these little wiring kind of bits and pieces that plug in to where his arms go. This completes the look to make it look like his arms have been ripped out of their sockets and the wires are just kind of trailing there. It's easy to pop them out and pop his real arms back on. They look good either way, but I'm glad they gave us the accessory because they could have just ignored it and had no arms in there like basically every C-3PO that's come apart has ever done. This is the first time they've done something on this level to give us this level of detail. So I like it and I appreciate it. The little nubbins themselves have a lot of great molded wires and sculpting and paint apps are very sharp. It looks very, very good. And of course the arms are also pretty good, they're arms, but we'll get more into that later. Just like the arms, we have his legs. His legs are technically accessories because they don't come on him in the box. What does come on him are these coverings that go over his leg nubbins. So the way his legs work is they disconnect at the thigh swivel, and what you have left over is covered by this kind of rubbery wire coating. Now, the wire coating in the box, at least for mine, wasn't put on the figure correctly, and I didn't know that, so when I tried to put him into the net, I had a lot of trouble, which we'll get into later. Oh, trust me, we'll get into it. But what I wanna point out here is that if you wanna properly put 
on these little wire coverings, there's a little slit in one side. And what that does is you actually have to push it up so that the joint that connects his thigh to his torso or his waist, that slit slides right in between that joint so that the wire covers his whole leg nubbin and not just the ends like it is in the package. That way it actually looks like the wires are coming straight out of his hips and not just kind of attached to the end of the leg nubbin. The leg coverings are sculpted and painted quite nicely, just like his arm ribbon cable parts are. And they look really good when they're on. If you get them on right and they're coming out, it just looks like C-3PO has a bunch of wires hanging out of his arm and leg sockets. And I really do appreciate that level of detail because again, they could have just ignored it. So that's it for the accessories that are specifically for C-3PO. But let's talk about the last accessory, the big accessory, the controversial accessory. The net is basically the bane of my existence. I spent the better part of an hour when I first opened this up trying to get this net and C-3PO and Chewbacca to work together. The net is what binds two different figures together as one in holy matrimony. Because without the net, they are just two figures. And two figures that I have four others of on my shelf. The net is what sets this figure set apart and what makes this figure set worth it. So if the net doesn't work, the whole figure set kind of doesn't work. And my initial response to this was, burn it with fire because it's awful. Granted, there are instructions and I didn't see those until much later. I was just having so many problems getting the net on Chewbacca because I didn't really know how that worked. And then I was having problems getting C-3PO in the net because both Chewbacca and C-3PO have a lot of bits that the net wants to get caught in because nets, what they do is they catch things. That's like their purpose. Both these figures have a lot of bits that stick out that want to be caught. So it was really hard getting the net around Chewbacca and C-3PO inside that net. In fact, the first night I did it, I had to take the leg coverings off of C-3PO because it was too much trouble to get them on because they kept coming off, they kept getting caught, it was too annoying, I just couldn't do it. I gave up, took them off, and put C-3PO in as best I could. I'm gonna post a tutorial if I haven't already on how to do this, and there'll be a link down below or up here somewhere uh, if you wanna watch the full tutorial on how that works. Now, the net itself is a woven fibrous material. It does have a lot of holes in it. A lot of people are pulling out of the package and saying, my net's broken, and it's not. The way it's designed, the way it's sewn together, there are two big gaping holes on the side. That's just kind of how it works. So don't try to return it, don't buy another one. Your net is fine. But all that being said, even knowing how the net works, even knowing how C-3PO's leg coverings work, it's still not super easy to get him in there. Sometimes the net sags. I'm genuinely worried the weight of C-3PO is gonna make the elastic give out while it's underneath Chewbacca's neck. I don't know how well this thing's gonna hold up. I don't have a lot of confidence in it. It is the pivotal accessory that brings this figure set together. And it does kind of fail in what it does. I'm like, yeah, you can do it. Clearly I have it going on here, but the amount of work it took to get it here, it just almost made it not worth it. They made the net too good at being a net. <laughs> That's, that's what it comes down to. So what I've actually done is I've given the accessories a 1.75, but I'm gonna detract a 0.25 from that score for the annoyingness that I had by, with figuring out how this net works. And it's gonna be a 1.5 for the accessories. So now that we're done with that, let's move on to articulation. How do these guys move? Now I've actually reviewed this Chewbacca before, so the articulation's not that different, but if you wanna take a look at it, if you haven't seen that, here it is real quick. Chewbacca's head doesn't really move side to side. It goes forward just a little bit. It goes back even less. His arm moves out that far. It can move all the way around. He has a swivel at his elbow. It has a very slight bend, but definitely not anywhere close to 90 degrees. He has a swivel at the hands as well as a hinge. He does have a torso swivel. It moves forward this far, back this far. His leg kind of comes forward and then it goes back. It goes out this far. He has a single jointed knee and a swivel at the knee as well as a swivel at the thigh. He has a hinge at the ankle as well as a rocker. With this being Chewie's widest stance with both his feet flat on the ground. C-3PO's head moves side to side. It moves forward a little bit, back that far. His arm moves out a little bit. It can move all the way around. He has an upper bicep swivel. He has a hinge that moves forward 
this far. He has a swivel at his wrist as well as a hinge. He has a torso swivel. It moves forward this far, back that far. His leg moves forward this far, back not at all. He has an upper thigh swivel, single jointed knee, a hinge at the ankle, as well as a rocker. With this being 3PO's widest stance with both his feet flat on the ground. So one of the problems I have with Chewbacca's sculpt is that it does severely hinder his articulation. His head has almost no movement worth speaking of. His arms definitely don't get a full 90 degree bend because of the sculpt. The legs aren't super great, although the knees are interesting. The knees have a single jointed bend with a rotation at the knee. And that's actually something we're gonna see a little bit more of in 2020. I believe both the Knight of Ren and Count Dooku have knees like this. Now being an older design, it's also missing some things that I've grown accustomed to that I wish figures had in 2020 and 2019, but I wish every figure had some sort of butterfly joint, especially Chewbacca here. I feel like he really could have benefited from having that joint. And then C-3PO is actually, I mean, he's better than he was. So the original release of C-3PO, as I said earlier, was awful in terms of articulation. He couldn't even move his elbows. This one used the newer arms from 4LOM, meaning that he has a joint on his elbows. He also has a swivel and that's new, but you don't really need much for C-3PO. The thing about C-3PO is he's not known for dynamic poses. So that's kind of fine. I kind of give it a pass. So I'm gonna give the articulation on both these figures a collective 1.25. So moving on to paint, sculpt, and detail, there's a lot of it here. Chewbacca himself is sculpted with a lot of fur and hair all over his body. It's a rubbery material that's sculpted with a lot of precision and detail. There's multiple shades of brown modeled all over his uh, body here to give him, you know, the look that he had in the movie. So I genuinely appreciate what he looks like. I'm just not a fan of the direction that they went when they chose to do this. Like he's got layers and it just looks weird. Now I get it though, because that's how you do it if you want him to have articulation too. So they're kind of sacrificing some looks for articulation, but they're also sacrificing some articulation for the looks and they're trying to find that balance. I can appreciate it, but I do kind of want to point out there were compromises made on both sides and they both show. I also have never liked Chewbacca's hands and this one's no exception. His hands are too thick and rigid and it's really hard to get any gun in those hands. You have to like bend them out and I feel like I'm gonna break it. Like I haven't yet, but it's not fun to get a weapon in Chewbacca's hands. So moving on to C-3PO, yes, C-3PO is still lacking that shiny luster, but I've already docked him for that, so I'm not gonna super dock him again. C-3PO has a lot of fantastic molded details all over his body from head to toe. This one also has a lot of grit and grime painted on him, which is something we haven't had officially in the line so far. Every 3PO release to this point had been pretty pristine in terms of looks. So this is the first one we've gotten that's been kind of dirtied up. Up until now, I've been using a custom that my buddy Stigma made for me, where he took the original C-3PO and just got them all dirty and painted them super well. That's still one of my favorite figures. And until Hasbro gives us something closer to that in the official line, I'm probably gonna still continue to use Use it because I'm definitely not going to disassemble this anytime I want to take a photo with this C-3PO. So thanks again Stigma for that fantastic custom. I still enjoy it on a daily basis. Anyways, C-3PO has got a lot of great wires and details and sculpt all over his body. It's really hard to find any faults with how he looks other than he is lacking that shiny luster, which again is kind of a big deal for me. But all that being said, I'm going to give this a collective 1.5. I feel like that's a good score for the both of them. Moving down to want, value, and availability. Did I want this? And the answer is yes. I mean, it's not the way I would have wanted it, but I did want it. My initial thoughts for getting this would be that they would release an ultimate C-3PO, like a deluxe C-3PO. And that 3PO would have removable limbs, a net, he would have alternate limbs, like a leg that's not silver, an arm that's red. So you can have a sequel 3PO or a original trilogy 3PO, and you can just kind of mix and match and swap around as you want. And then you can just put it on whatever Chewbacca that you want and be done with it. That would have been the way that I would have wanted it had they asked me how to do it, but they didn't. Instead, they released five separate C-3PO's where some of the differences are just the color of the arm, the color of the leg, you know, things like that. And then that brings us to Chewbacca, which the problem here is he's just Chewbacca. He doesn't have a lot of different looks in the movie. We needed three Chewbaccas from the original trilogy at most, but instead we have five, five Chewbaccas. But I guess it's kind of nice, instead of releasing two separate figures that could be paired together like this, 
they just released it as a two pack. So I appreciate that. I just kind of wish they'd done it so I didn't have to buy new figures to do this in the first place. Let me make the choice of buying extra C-3PO's if I want to display them at the same time different ways. I still think people would buy multiple C-3PO's if they wanted to do that. So worth. Is this worth $50? What they're basically saying is each of these figures is worth $25. That's $5 more than a standard retail figure is going for. Do you get enough extra accessories to warrant an extra $10? If this had been 40 bucks, I would not have batted an eye. And truth be told, I still didn't really bat an eye at the $50 price point, but I am acknowledging that yes, it is $10 too expensive. I think a better price for this would be 30 bucks, but I get it, this is two figures. So $40 is reasonable. I can even argue $45 is reasonable. 50 though, I do think that's just a little bit too much for what you're getting. And they've given us even more accessories like that extra bow caster, extra hands, blast effects, things like that. I would be more inclined to paying the full $50. And I, obviously I did pay the full $50 anyway. It still kind of sucks. And then lastly, availability here. This is an Amazon exclusive, which for being exclusive, it's about as good as it gets. I'm a Prime member. As soon as this thing went up for pre-order, I pre-ordered it. It was supposed to be here by the 24th when it got released, but I got an email on Tuesday saying, yo, it's gonna be there tomorrow. And next thing I know, it's in my Amazon hub here at my place. So yeah, it sucks that it's Amazon, but if it was gonna be exclusive, I actually would rather it be Amazon because I don't have to go out anywhere. I don't have to worry about having instant gratification to buy this. I don't have to worry about relying on people out there saying, I found these in the wild, go out and find it, and me going from place to place not finding anything and wasting a bunch of gas. If something's gonna be exclusive, I don't mind it being Amazon exclusive. I'm not gonna dock it too much for that because while exclusives do suck, this is the best possible case scenario. But for all this category, I'm gonna give it a one. It's got one point out of the possible two here because the value does kind of bring it down. The want kind of brings it down just a bit and so does you know the fact that it's exclusive. So if you've been paying attention, that gives us a full score of six and a half out of 10. Now I like to do these out of five, so I'm just gonna half that right down the middle to give me a more reasonable number, which gives us a 3.25 out of five to kind of fall in line with the rest of my scale. It's not a perfect figure by any means, but it's also, I wouldn't call it a terrible figure. It has problems, it can be frustrating, it's too expensive, but when I see it on my shelf looking like this, I can't help but smile. So if you've somehow gone this long without getting both a C-3PO or Chewbacca, or you don't have too many, you don't mind having extras in your collection, or you're a big fan of The Empire Strikes Back and you already have a Bespin Escape Leia and a Bespin Lando hanging on your shelf, and you need this to complete that escape from Bespin kind of presence on your shelf, this is actually, I would say, a must buy for your collection, but only in those specific instances. I mean, if you already have three or four Chewbacca's and three or four C-3PO's and you just don't wanna spend 50 bucks, you could probably wait. It'll probably be on sale at some point. But uh, for me and my shelves, I needed this. It's gonna go right here. So that's it for my Chewbacca and C-3PO review. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the downstairs area, what did you think of it? Did you order it? Were you as frustrated with it as I was? It means a lot to me if you could comment down below. I love to read and respond to those. I'd also like to take a moment to thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon at a level where I thank them for my Black Series reviews. It means a lot to me to have your name here and I appreciate it a lot. If you want your name here, go ahead and check out my Patreon. There's a link somewhere anywhere around here, and you can see if it's right for you. If it's not, if you don't wanna spend any money, I get it, it's not a big deal. Go ahead and you can support me in other ways down in the downstairs area. You can also like, share, subscribe, hit that bell. All of that stuff goes to help support the channel if you want to. And with that, thank you so much for getting this far, and I'll see you later. Bye.